Then you have a larger phenomenon uh, of promotion women, and uh, these are not uh, prostitutes. These are young women uh, who are hired across the continents and, uh, and also in, in Southeast Asia, for example, to go to, uh, yeah, to bars and clubs to, to convince customers to take Heineken brands and other, uh, other companies, other beer companies do it as well. So uh, there, what I found out is that these women are very often fix victims of uh, sexual abuse. There, there's often uh, unwanted touching uh, at intimate places, and um, these girls, these women, don't really have a choice. Um, if, if they say we don't want this to happen, um, yeah, they basically have to choose another job. It's 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 uh, it's what they're being told by their team leaders. And this has been, um, I think what makes this case uh, really interesting and shocking is that Heineken has been aware of this for, for almost 20 years now. At the beginning of the century, it was already a scandal in Cambodia. And Heineken said, we have resolved it. Uh, the problems don't, are not there anymore. And when the press, when, when no one was looking anymore, it just went on, you know? And then I discovered that in, in many African countries, you had very similar problems to those in Cambodia. When I revealed this in my book uh, that came out in the Netherlands in, uh, in 2018, Heineken really reacted like, oh, we're gonna, as if they discovered it for the first time, you know, and we're gonna react very adequately. And, um, uh, but, they, they, they made a bold statement like, uh, okay, if we can't guarantee good working conditions for those women within a few months, so that the, the, the sexual harassment should stop. What I also discovered is that they sometimes had to sleep with their bosses uh, or customers in order to keep the job or to get the job. And there was often uh, also prostitution involved. Uh, they actually they made so little that if they wanted to earn a bit more, uh, it was very tempting to go home with, uh, with customers. Uh, so you could see Heineken actually as a facilitator of prostitution uh, in this case as well. So when I went to check if after these uh, three months, Heineken really kept its word and could guarantee these good working conditions, I went to Kenya to see for myself and nothing had changed. These women still had to wear very short and tight skirts in which they felt like prostitutes. There was still unwanted touching. There was, everything was still as it was, you know? And then the, um, the CEO said, yeah, we can't control anything. We don't hire these women who promote our beer directly. There are agencies who hire them. So he kind of implied it's not really our responsibility. Yeah, I think that was, uh, it was in, in, in the middle of the Me Too era as well. Um, and Heine the Heineken CEO said, Me Too is a Western phenomenon. So it doesn't apply to, to Africa. We have to look at cultural differences. He seemed to accept that uh, sexual harassment, uh, these sort of problems are, are more acceptable in Africa than they would be in the West.